we built e-production motors, streetcar motors, SCCA motors, lots of variations. And uh, usually if you're looking for horsepower, response, and you're dealing with naturally aspirated, that compression makes a, dis a difference. So generally we're always recommending the Series 5 naturally aspirated rotors. Um, that's our favorite high compression rotor. But uh, like I keep mentioning, there also is the RX-8 if you want to use it as an option. Um, but you can't use that shallow apex seal on a uh, per peripheral exhaust or peripheral intake. They also have a different side seal. So uh, another unique thing here is the, uh, the traditional side seals were always a flat sided. And uh, the RX-8 actually has a V'd uh, side seal groove. They also moved the side seals outward slightly. As you can see, there's physically less tip area. So it's one of the things that uh, can lead to concerns if, uh, if you're trying to run a Renesis motor in something that's not a Renesis. Sorry, that's yeah, that built apex rotor. I'm not too fond of this one. The lightning uh, that he did didn't come out square. You can see right there that the, uh, the tips are... It's just not square. That's a whole different story, though. That's Series 4. You can see it's cast pocket, 93 machined pocket. Renesis, also machined pocket. But as far as identification goes, there's so many things that make this rotor, rotor unique. The, uh, the side seals, the apex seals, the pocket depth, the notching. It, to me, it's hard to misidentify an RX-8 rotor they're kind of a unique rotor in themselves. They're also the lightest rotor from the factory. Uh, coming in at approximately 9.3 pounds, comparatively to a Series 4 rotor, which is up closer to 10, um, or an FD rotor, which is, you know, kind of in between those two. So, lightest rotor, um, interesting seals, apex seal, side seals, notching, which we tested notching at Mazda Tricks, and I'll do a whole nother talk about this. We did a series of tests and, and notching rotors back to back on dyno runs, comparatively a series five rotor or FD rotor where you notch it compared to one that's not notched if it's in the same motor. On the Mazda Tricks dyno, we got zero change in horsepower. Yes, we saw a horsepower change between the RX-8 and other rotors because of compression, um, and that makes a little more sense. However, it was not nearly the change that I think some people expect. is very, very minimal. Um, but there's a lot of talk on the, the internet about notching, and uh, we tested it at Mazda Tricks, and we were surprised and enlightened by the fact that we saw no gains when we did do the testing. So um, that's some interesting stuff. Obviously, uh, you know, since there's no turbo RX-8 rotors, you're never going to see an RX-8 rotor with a, a T cast into it anywhere. Um, they are a late model casting, so you can see it's got the step down towards the tip, so the tip has a little more tip clearancing than the land. Uh, most late model rotors are like that. Um, this casting process that they did on the RX-8 rotor is also different than your earlier castings. And, you know, somebody can chime in and maybe enlighten me on this, but my understanding is when they tooled up to cast the RX-8 rotors, they retooled to cast the older rotors in a more modern way. And my understanding is the original rotors were more of a flow cast, as where the RX-8 rotor is a spin cast. And if you're familiar with casting, they're able to use less material and control that cast a little better. Um, so that's one of the ways that Mazda has improved their techniques, their castings, and rotors have changed, comparatively speaking, to modern rotors that are sold from the factory compared to these, these earlier rotors. So always remember, um, you know, an easy way to identify rotor weights or matching pairs is they always will, on the gear side, have... A weight. So this is an e-rotor. You can see that is the marking for the side seal, as well as that. You got an R side seal, 
and then over here a Q, so Q, R, S, and then the extra stamping would be your weight, which is an E. So if you were trying to buy a, a rotor from the factory, um, you know, you're probably going to get a C. That's, that's the majority of what's stocked. That would put you two letters away, C, D, E. Um, there's people that don't agree with me on this, but I would never consider that a matched pair. They're going to have a large weight split. You'd obviously want to get your rotors rebalanced. And really for that matter, even if I have two matching rotors that were, say, both E's, I'm still going to have the assembly balanced because we're not balancing rotor to rotor. Um, when we're doing high-speed balancing, we're balancing rotors to counterweights, uh, creating a smoother operational assembly, just like you would with a piston motor, um, an airplane, or anything you're trying to cut vibrations. And with rotaries, it's fantastic because they're an on-center motor. 100% duty cycle, so when they are properly balanced, they're exceptionally smooth. I hope I uh, covered enough of that there. Um, that gives some specs, years 2004 to 2011. Uh, not the same apex seal groove depth as earlier rotors, but it is a 2 millimeter apex seal. Different side seals, different corner seals. Uh, your oil control rings uh, are interchangeable. Um, that's about it. I hope everybody enjoys this Rotor Tech Talk with KMR. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask or comment below. And if there's any topics you would like to have us cover, hey, let us know. And we're going to continue to work our way through our rotary knowledge in the combined effort of KMR and Mazda Tricks. Make sure to check out the Kyle Mohan Racing website. Say hi on social media. Come to a Formula Drift event. We love talking rotaries, making fireballs. It's all about that brap. Follow Kyle Mohan Racing.